You're listening to The Low and No Show, a podcast that tells the inspiring stories from brands and the founders. My name is Johnny Stevens, the founder of Better Without, the app that helps people discover low and no drinks. I'm sitting down with guests to hear their stories, learn about their products and the lessons they've learned. So, hello and welcome. Um, I'm delighted today to do episode number one of our podcast. And for episode one, I'm delighted to have our guest, Fern McCoy from Mockingbird. For those that don't know, Mockingbird is a tequila-style non-alcoholic drink. Now, if you're anything like me, thinking tequila, for me, I think end of a night. Um, But I recently tried it, tried it in some cocktails, and actually got to appreciate um, tequila in, in, in its true form. So I won't rabble on for any longer. Let me introduce Fern. Hello, Fern. Hi, uh, you're all right. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. Well, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. And you've been on a, a very exciting journey. It's been quite a short journey in some ways. Um, and I imagine there has been, you know, many different things that, that you faced. And I'd love to hear, first of all, just tell me a bit about the brand. Yeah, of course. So we launched only like less than six months ago now. So, yeah, it is still really new. Um, but it's something I've been working on for quite a while now. Um, I just kind of had a real interest in like low and no and watching, seeing what other people were doing, trying new products. And I just saw a gap I saw that no one was doing a tequila Um, tequila is my favorite alcoholic drink so I felt like I had a little bit of knowledge around it and um, wanted to have a go at making a non-alcoholic version but just using the exact same ingredients as what would be in a traditional tequila so that's kind of where it all started and um, yeah we managed to launch in August last year after developing during the lockdowns one and two <laughs> so <Love> yeah <laughs> and it's a great story to come out of lockdown and and to have worked on something while I think you mentioned when we've had discussions being on furlough actually using that time to come up with something that that you want to take to market yeah exactly I just found that like I have such a keen interest in drinks and non-alcohol and I had all this time I had all this energy um, and there was very little else going on. So it was like the perfect storm yeah. to like create something of my own and really have that time to dedicate what you need to. Because a lot, you obviously, we always have really kind of interesting ideas and things that we'd like to do, but it more often than not comes down to just your resources and your time. So all of a sudden having that was kind of a blessing in disguise. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I found very similar. It's it's almost like you, you were given this time that you could there was no pressure to to do stuff with with lockdown. And actually, it, it, you know, if you could get out for a walk or a cycle or whatever, you got that creativity come in and, and that's when the ideas flow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I'm intrigued, obviously, low and no massively growing category, um, you know, some fantastic brands doing some great stuff. Why did you decide to go into low and no? Well, my other half is a recovering alcoholic, sober now for five years. So I kind of, yeah, so I understand that journey. I understand the desire not to drink. I understand um, a willingness to try non-alcohol for lifestyle reasons and wellness. And I kind of had a little bit of insight into who the customer could or would be and kind of built everything around that essentially because um yeah a lot of people say oh like it's difficult to grasp what the point is but it's it literally is for anyone who can't shouldn't or doesn't want to <laughs> drink alcohol yeah. so, so that's it really <laughs> amazing and there, there's so many more people out there that, that aren't drinking for whatever reason um and you know when I speak to people they they love the fact that there's more choice more options they feel more than ever that they're being included, which I think is, you know, is great for, you know, for people because actually why, why always the need to drink and, you know, obviously but better without, we're, we're focused on no and low um, drinks, but, but, you know, that may not be, you know, not drinking all the time. It's, you know, having that, having that balance. Um, and that, that for me is, is the key. 
So I mean, intrigued. Where where do you start? So you've you've come up with this idea. You want to do um, a, a non-alcoholic tequila. What, what what next? What do you do? Yeah. So basically, I did a lot of research around tequila. All my favorite tequilas. What kind of tasting notes I was getting from each of those. Why was it I liked this one more than that one? Um, and kind of we've grown to appreciate what those different flavors were whether it was the smokiness the earthiness and kind of really did a deep dive into that that was a good kind of starting point to see what I was trying to create without alcohol mm. um, and then I did some more research around blue agave which is the original ingredient that would be used to make a tequila um, looked about how how we get hold of things like that, especially during a pandemic. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> there's, there's, there's lots of um, lots of different obstacles that that creates because obviously it doesn't come from the UK. It comes from a town in Mexico called Tequila. So it was just about kind of um, forming relationships, doing my research, literally calling upon anyone who I could find on LinkedIn or via email or websites and experts and just asking for a lot of help because I've never done this before. And yeah. so I don't know anyone who's done this before. So it was really, it was really about asking for help and just knowing that I wouldn't be able to forge ahead alone. It was going to take um, some vulnerability and being uh, open to asking for help. And that's exactly yeah. what I did basically. <laughs> Which is, is brilliant. And you're right, is, you know, actually people are you know, much more receptive to, if you're asking for help, people are very keen to, to, to help come up with new ideas and and actually it's amazing I'm sure you found that you can start to ask someone and suddenly someone knows someone who can help and it, it's it's really you know I think now with you know LinkedIn and, and being able to to actually connect with people it makes product development and trying to get something off the ground probably so much quicker than it did you know 10 years ago. Yeah, imagine trying to do it with like the yellow pages or something. Yeah, 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 so, yeah so we're flicking through and hoping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And so, so where where are you in terms of obviously you've you've developed this product, um, you've you know you've you've got it into production. I love the branding, love the bottle. I know you've just launched your your new website. Um, you know what what next for the the product? Yeah, so at the moment I'm working on my next product which uh -huh. is yeah which is going to be um along a similar line um I'm not gonna I'm gonna stick with the kind of the tequila side of things the Mexican side of things all the stuff which I really have a passion for and that I feel is gonna like help my brand and build my brand um I can't say too much at the moment but it is no. actually a collaboration between two brands in the industry amazing so, we love yeah. a collaboration. <laughs> we love a collaboration, and and I think that that is what's great about you know the the the, the sector is that actually, yeah, you know, they are happy to collaborate, and and this for me it's about coming up with great products. And uh, well, as soon as you have news, I will I, I want to know about it, and uh, yeah, we want to hear more when you have. Yeah, hundred percent. And and the the drink obviously you've you've sort of launched it in a in, in a pandemic I imagine hospitality is is something you want to get into um I I would assume that that's been quite a challenge having launched in the pandemic when hospitality is closed yeah definitely I was really kind of that's what I've pinned a lot of my hopes on was working with um, people in the hospitality industry hopefully doing a couple tastings some events you know really trying to build my connections especially in my local area of Bristol we're a really like foodie drinky sort of community yeah. so I thought that would be absolutely perfect um but I haven't been able to do any of that so. no nope. <laughs> There's I've, still um, time. <laughs> yeah, I've only had one in-person meeting since I've actually launched the drink. So and that was between two lockdowns. So it's just like, yeah, so it's obviously really um, different to how I imagined it when I yeah. first was coming up with my kind of plan, my strategy and things like that. But I feel like it's, I've kind of now drawn all my attention over to my customers. 
So in a way, it's kind of like the silver lining to it is that I'm actually getting to know the customers really, really well and then kind of going to be able to build on that a lot more and I'm getting some really nice feedback. So although it's not in a situation where there's a hundred people around me and we're all chatting and everything, I'm getting a lot more one-on-one, which is really nice Nice. as well. So I'm enjoying that. Nice. And, And that's the thing, you can get to know your customers and you can, and actually when you, when hospitality does open, actually you've got that customer base and you, you know much more than probably you ever would. And, and actually, I think, you know, hospitality being closed for the last, well, on and off for the last year, you know, no and low has moved massively since then, loads of new products. And I think, you know, when, when it does open, which hopefully it won't be long, um, you know, that there's so much more for them to, to embrace. And I think, as well, you know, we, we're really keen and going, you know, obviously beer is, you know, people have known about beer and non-alcoholic beer for a long time, but there's so much more out there and it's trying to educate, you know, hospitality about all the different options and actually that there is the customer demand. So I think for, for you, you know, understand that customer's only going to help. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just so grateful for kind of everyone else in the industry that came before as well, because I it's been a lot of hard work, I imagine. And um, although sometimes you'd maybe feel like you're even a bit late to the party, actually, it's very much still a rising kind of tide at the moment. So, yeah, I think it's been really amazing what's been happening. It is. And, and I think it's really interesting. I speak to people around the world. Obviously, the UK seems to be really trailblazing in terms of coming up with products and some of the brands that are coming out of the UK but you know I know in the US massive movement that there's a lot more um you know that's happened in the in the last 12 months same with Australia you know I remember my cousins who who were based in Australia hadn't really heard much about no and low 12 months ago and now it's you know a big thing And, and I think everyone that's in the industry is playing a part to to moving that along and do you know what, you know, coming out with new products, I don't think there's, I, I don't know many, you know, tequila um, style products that are in the no and low category. So I think you, you've hit something that, that no one else is doing. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think it's really nice as well, just to make sure that there is that variety because, um, you know, I, I love seeing lots of different types of products because although maybe one type of low and no is not for you as a customer, there's bound to be something you like yeah. because there's just yeah. so much amazing choice now. And then that's like, that's perfect, isn't it? Because that's what you want. There is. Uh, and it's a really, you know, I think it's a really interesting one because the flavors have got so good. And, you know, I, I think actually the choice as you say is there whether you you know if you don't like beer it doesn't matter there's so many other choices and yeah I I was reading a stat the other day that said that you know now we're looking at like 25 percent of of all visits to pubs are you know to have a a non-alcoholic drink um which is amazing and I think that's only going to grow the more selection that there there is um and to to help people discover those brands um and you know I think hospitality obviously will will do a massive part of that and I'm sure when it opens you know it will be a massive success Mm, yeah definitely I just yeah I just really want the hospitality to be able to like reopen again I feel so terrible for what's going on in the industry and like as soon as as soon as it's open I'm just going to support it as much as possible (laughs) Yeah. yeah and I think that's the thing and I think you know consumers supporting it brands working together um, yeah, there's a, there's, I think what 2020 you know actually brought together is look, we have to work together. Um, you know, to achieve things, let's let's work together. We you know as a group, you know we are going to do much better. And and I think as you say, when ho- hospitality opens their doors, you know I think that, that there is lots of opportunity. And I've I've got a question going going back a little bit. So we you talked about obviously when you started you would you were looking at research um, and sort of you you understood your your customer. I'm intrigued when you know when you what you thought was your customer has that ended up being your customer or have you discovered new new almost markets for for your product? Yeah, I'd say it's really really different to what I was expecting actually. Yeah, I was 
for some reason I was expecting it to be much younger people majority because I was think like generally speaking younger people are maybe a little bit more open minded a bit more into their wellness you know we're hearing about the gen z that they no one's drinking anymore and everyone's more like looking after themselves and everything but it has been literally a whole range of people it's not been young just young people i would mm-hmm. say even it's been more kind of your 40 50 plus um other people cuz for whatever reasons maybe they're on medication or maybe they're just looking to switch up their lifestyle a bit um so yeah it's been really different to what i expected i would say everything has been different to what i expected <laughs> <laughs> which is is great and and i think it you know there's so many lessons that you'll learn along the way and no matter how much planning you do things are going to change and there's nothing you you can do about it is you know i think sometimes you just got to go for it which you know you have and and get the product out there get the feedback you know you could spend you know years trying to understand that that market but actually the best thing you can do is get out there get feedback and and go from there exactly and then with the low no like it's the the figures are always changing as well like 20% of people are trying no low 30% 50% 60% of people so it's just like you you can't predict it necessarily in an accurate way you just need to kind of ride the wave because that's what's happening at the moment everything is a little bit unprecedented unpredictable <laughs> yeah absolutely and there's you know there it is just going let's see what let's see what happens you know every day you know take every day as it comes and you know see what what we can do and and in terms of obviously the product um you know i i i got a product uh, i think it's lovely i've tried it in cocktail um and also um you know i know when you send it out you send out a couple of sort of sample recipes um what what would be if you had one one recipe that you'd recommend that people try what is it with your product i would always recommend in an alcohol free margarita that's just the perfect drink i just love everything about it because the mockingbird is kind of smoky then you have the saltiness of the margarita with the citrus like that for me ticks so many boxes but i know you said only one but <laughs> if <laughs> we'll allow you to <laughs> yeah i was going to say there more <laughs> if you're like wanting to be a little bit more kind of pared back and more simple and you're not going to be at home with your cocktail shaker every night and things like that i would definitely just say a lime and soda water is really good because you're nice. still getting the similar flavors you can make it into a nice long drink um and enjoy it that way because yeah i i hate i like I don't want to put pressure on to people to have to have like 25 different things in their house at all times because it's just <laughs> not realistic. <laughs> Although mine seems to be getting like that. I, yeah. oh, I want to try it. I want to try it. <laughs> I love it. And so where where can people find you? Yeah, so available on Amazon, um on our own website. Um we are on um all the kind of alcohol free wise bartender alcohol free company all those kind of dedicated websites um as well so yeah brilliant well we'll we'll make sure that people people go to you i've got one one final question so we obviously we we know the the the, the brand what's behind the name okay yeah so there's a kind of a few things around the name <laughs> it's like so the mockingbird is uh famous because it imitates the calls of other birds so in the same way we're kind of imitating the flavor of tequila just without the alcohol so um we say we humbly mimic it because we're not making fun of it we're just kind of wanting to almost be like it it's not it's not a bad thing <laughs> um nice. then also you have um from to kill a mockingbird the book which is all about the mockingbird representing the idea of innocence and so you know sometimes if you've had one too many then you feel this yeah. kind of like anxiety this guilt so it was kind of yeah. like being the opposite of that and then the last one was just uh to kill a mockingbird it's just a I love it and- <laughs> I, I I think that's the one you should go with I love it I yeah. I I I heard you talking about that recently and I was like that's genius <laughs> yeah. so silly but yeah those are kind of the reasons that and all of those together I was just like it has to be <laughs> I love it that that's brilliant well I really appreciate your time and it's been great speaking to you and i'm sure we look forward to hearing all the exciting stuff to come yeah definitely thank you so so much